Here's some homework problems from chapter seven. Um, I worked them out um, and I'll just go over them quickly, but there's a couple of nuances that uh, that show up in some of them that I'll, I'll point out. Okay, so um, everything that um, I'm gonna add to these notes, I'll do it in red. Okay, first one is number uh, two from chapter seven. Okay, so read through this. Okay, hit pause, read through this. So you have a meteorite coming in Okay. So it has initial kinetic energy, hits the ground, no kinetic energy. And for part A, they want to know what's the loss of energy. Okay, And then you know it's a loss, so they don't care about being negative. So they want to know how much energy is lost. Well, the energy that's lost okay, is the initial kinetic energy, which is just one half mv squared. All right? So that's no big deal. So that I did. In part B, they want the answer expressed um, in terms of a megaton. Okay, and they tell you that in that many joules, you have one megaton. So I converted those units. Okay, in part C, they say, okay, now I want uh, I want to convert that to how many Hiroshima bombs. So I take my answer from C. Okay, I go from megaton. Okay, mega is ten to the six. Okay, and then I go from um, one ton. I go to kilo. Thousand tons is a kiloton, and then they tell me one Hiroshima bomb is thirteen uh, kilotons of TNT. So that's right. So that's what they wanted you to find. Whoop, for part C, okay, they wanted you to know. Let's see how many. So that's why there's no units for C. And part B, they wanted to know expressing energy as a multiple. That's why there's no units for B. Okay. So this is question number three. Okay, so read through question three. You can pause. All right, so here you have um, an explosion. All right, let's see. So they tell me that the explosion leaves a certain crater. So diameter one kilometer, that's due to one megaton of uh, TNT. Now you, have a, now you have a diameter of 60 kilometers. They want to know what energy caused that. Now up here they tell you that the diameter is proportional to the energy of the explosion raised to the one-third. So in this part of there, they tell me that, that the diameter is proportional to the kinetic energy raised to the one-third power, or the energy raised to the one-third power. So I'm going to use that letter for, D, or for diameter, because i got a small d here, a capital D here. I'm using a different type of d here. So the diameter is equal to some constant times the kinetic energy to the one-third. So for my second picture, okay, so diameter number two is some constant times kinetic energy to the one-third, and then same thing for the first per picture, okay? Now, I'm trying to find, okay, for part A, I want to find what's the kinetic, en what's the kinetic energy associated with the impact of the 60-kilometer crater, uh, cre uh, crater. So I want to find K2. Well, I can solve this one for C, I can solve this one for C, set them equal, or I just make a ratio, okay? So I wrote, I wrote this equation here, okay? So D2 is equal to C times K2, uh, K2 to the one-third, and I divide it, by, divide it by that one, okay? And then my constants cancel out, all right? raise both sides, or uh, cube both sides, that gets rid of the third power, and then solve this for K2, okay? And then I know the, the diameters. They give me the first kinetic energy or energy of the explosion is one megaton. So for part A, I get the kinetic energy for the large uh, crater, okay? And then they want you to do the same thing with units. They want you to convert that to how many Hiroshima bombs equivalent equivalents. And that's why, okay, well, I mean, here they ask you, okay, they ask you where to go, okay, the, find the number of bomb equivalents, okay, so here they just decided to give you a, a pull-down unit of Hiroshima bombs. Okay, question seven, okay, so here you have something being lowered, they give you the acceleration, okay, read through this, and falls a certain distance, I used H, and they want you to find the work done by the tension, okay? Well, remember, work done by a force is that force dotted into the displacement, okay? Well, that means the work done by the tension is a tension times the distance to which the object moves times the cosine of the angle between them. So I look at this picture, 
Tension points up, direction is headed is down. That's downward. So the angle between them is 180. Cosine 180 is minus 1. So it makes sense that the work done by the tension should be negative. Okay. So that means you have to find the tension. Okay. So I did F equal MA, five-step method, picture, forces, coordinate system. Okay. This is step five. So I did MG minus tension is MA. And they tell me the acceleration is one-third G. Okay. So just solve this for T. Okay. Do the algebra. Solve that for T. A is one-third G, so I have one G minus one-third G, I get two-thirds G, okay? So this gives me the tension, and then the work done by the tension is minus t, minus t times H, so minus T times H. So it makes sense that the work done by the tension is negative, okay? Part B, they want to find the work done by the gravitational force. Well, that's in the direction it's going, right? So it's the force times the direction it's going, times the cosine of the angle between them, the angle between mg and the direction it's going is zero. Cosine zero is one. So the work done by gravity is positive. Okay. Then part C, they want the kinetic energy of the block. Well, work energy theorem says the net work, okay, not the work done by one force, but the net work done by all forces on an object changes the kinetic energy. So the net work is the work done by gravity and the tension. And that's k final minus k initial. That starts from rest. That's zero. Okay, and I just solve this for k final. So I have that as a number above. I have that as a number above. Okay, watch your signs, and that gets you the, the final kinetic energy. Okay, then in part D, they want to know, okay, what's the final speed? Well, that's the kinetic energy, right? And kinetic energy is one half m v squared. So you just solve this for v for v final, and then you're done. Okay, over here I kind of went the long route. Okay. That way is better. The long route is I just rewrote the work energy theorem. Okay, net work done is, is change of kinetic energy, which is k final. Okay, I solved this for v final, and my net work that was exactly what I did um, right up here. Okay, I did my 205 minus 137. Okay, all right, so this one's a little bit different. This one deals with the concept of power. Okay, so read through question 12. Okay, so a horse pulls a cart. They gave me the angle. Okay, they gave me the force. And they say, you got to be careful, it says, and it moves along at that speed. So that means it's moving at constant speed. So the acceleration is zero. Okay, so they want to know how much work does that force do in 12 minutes? Okay, well, work is, well, here's my picture. There's my force. Okay, but the work done by that force, remember, it's a dot product. So it's the component of the force along the direction you're going times that distance. So I have the force, have the angle, but I don't know the distance. So I use equation number two. Okay, here it's not accelerating. Okay, so it's just the speed times the time. So they gave me the speed. Okay, so I converted that to feet per second. Okay, 12 minutes is 720 seconds. So that's how far it goes. So the work done is my force times that angle. Here's my F cosine. There's my F cosine. There's my distance. And again, when you're doing these, this problem, you have no idea what units they want. I have no idea. So you click that button right there, and you're not going to find um, joules. Okay. So you say, oh, they gave it to me in foot pounds. So that's why you gave the an I gave the answer in foot pounds. Okay. Part B, they want to know what's the average power of the force. Okay. What power does that force provide? Okay. The, the power due to the to the force of the horse um, pulling on it, the, the tension in whatever rope it's co uh, connected to. Okay, so average power is the work done per time. Okay, there's the work done, there's the time. Okay, but when you pull, when you use the pull down menu, they're not going to give you foot pounds per second. So go in the back of the book. And they'll tell you that one horsepower is 550 foot-pounds per second. So that's where that came from. And that gives it to you in, in horsepower. Okay. Okay, so this is question number seven. Okay, in chapter eight. All right. So, whoops. So that was chapter seven. This one's chapter eight. Okay, so look through this problem. Okay, so I drew a picture. So basically, you have a spring, spring sitting there. That's the top of the spring. Okay, that's the relaxed position of the spring. I call that y equals zero. 
all right? And then you let go of the block up here at point A, hits the spring, momentarily compresses it. I just drew that picture over here, momentarily compresses it. So my diagram shows it's at rest. That's how much the spring is compressed. And they wanna know for part A, what's the work done by the block on the spring? Okay, so for part A, I redrew the picture. Okay, otherwise I get messy on the left here. Redrew the picture. So here's the block compressing the spring. Okay, so the block's exerting a downward force. Okay, so it's exerting a downward force. So the force is downward, it's moving downward, so the angle between them is zero. So you would expect the work done by that force should be positive. Okay, so whenever you think of springs and work and energy, you should think of one half kx squared, right, for work and energy stored in the spring, when you're starting from, from zero, okay? Otherwise, we integrate it, you had an x squared initial minus an x squared final or something like that. Okay, so part A, the work done on the spring by the block, right, it's positive, and that's one half kd squared. Okay, and they, they, they tell you how much that's um, compressed by. They give you k, convert it to correct units, that gives you the work done by the spring. By, work done on the spring by the block. Part B, okay, remember, so when we started this chapter, that, that's why I said that, you know, you can't point at something and say, what's the work? You have to say, what's the work done on what by who? So part B, they want the work done by the spring on the block, okay? Well, I drew the same picture, okay? So the block is moving downward, okay? But the spring force pushes up. All right, so here, uh, spring force pushes up, block moving down, the angle between the force and the direction it's moving is 180 degrees, oops, right there, 180 degrees, cosine of 180 is minus one, okay? So we'd expect that the work done on the block by the spring should be negative, okay? So that's why it's minus one half kd squared, okay? Part C, they want the value of h, okay? So you wanna they wanna find, Okay, they want to find, let's see, where's H? Okay, so H is the height from where it's released to where above the vertical spring. So that's H on my picture from there to there. Okay, so I read you my picture. Okay, there's H. So I'm using energy. So here's our go-to energy expression. Okay, and this term is for energy loss due, due to kinetic friction. There's no kinetic friction. There's no non-conservative forces that act, okay? The spring force is a conservative force. The work done by the spring goes into changing the potential energy of the system, okay? So energy is conserved, and I'm going from point A to point C, from A to C. So from that energy state to that energy state. So I wrote down all my initials, all my finals, and for potential energy, uh, due to gravity, I had to pick a reference point. So our convenient rule of thumb is I pick it at the lowest point that it's going to go, okay? And that was given in the problem right there, okay? So initial kinetic is when I let go, that's zero. Whoops, that's zero, okay? Initial uh, potential energy due to gravity is my mg times my total height. So look at my picture, that's my total height from my reference point, okay? H plus D. Initial, uh, initial potential energy stored in the spring up here. Springs relax, so that's why that's zero. Okay. Then final kinetic, it's at rest down here at C. Final gravitational potential is zero, because that's my refer reference point. And the potential energy stored in the spring, that's my one-half K D squared. I just use D. Okay. And then just do the algebra, solve that for H. That's no big deal. Okay. Now, the tricky thing is, where'd it go? They say, okay. Now, if the block were, were released instead of from H, let's say it's released from 5H, okay, higher, okay, what would be the compression of the spring? Okay, so instead of releasing at a height H, now they want it at 5H. I'm not using H0, okay, why use two symbols when I can use one symbol? So, okay, so for part D, now it's 5H. Okay, so what I did here is... Let's see. Um, I already know that H is, that's my H, okay? So set set the height, okay, call 
here's my new height, five times that. All right. So then what I have to do is put in this number there. Okay. So that's my 5h. Okay. And then I'm using this expression. Okay. And I solve that for d. Okay. So what I did was that actually I could probably even use this one. That one works fine too. Okay. So solve this expression right here for, or not solve it. <clears throat> you rearrange it. You're trying to solve it for d. So what I did is I kept, uh, let's see, I, let's see, I did d squared. Here I just divide it by mg. So I divide everything by m and g. So that's why I have the k on the top. There's my k. So I have kd squared, kd squared. And then I have 2mg. Okay, this 2mg came from right here. There's the 2. And there's the mg I divided by. And then I have an h all by itself and a d all by itself. That's what I have there. Okay. So this is a quadratic equation. Okay. It's quadratic in d. Okay. So I have my, I have my a term. I have my b term. Whoops. And my b term. And then I have my c. Okay. So there, my a term is positive. My B term is minus 1, and my C term is minus, uh, minus that height, 5 times my original height. So that's quadratic in D. So put in your calculator. I get a negative root, which has no physical meaning, and I get a positive root. So that's the expression we're trying to find. Okay. All right, so this one's a little bit more involved. So they give me kind of like a pendulum. So it's thrown here. There's your hand. Okay, and they give you the angle, and they want to know what's the speed at the lowest position. Okay, so I'm going from A to B. So on my picture, I said, okay, this is L. Okay, I called this H, that's the height above my reference point. Okay, so I have a triangle here, so that's L. That height is L cosine. Okay, so <clears throat> the total height L, okay, total height L, is my L cosine plus that little h, okay? So I solved this for h, and h is L minus L cosine, or I can write it like that. Okay, so I wanna find how fast is it going at the bottom, okay? Yeah, what's, what's the speed at the bottom, given the speed at A? So I have my general energy expression, or go-to expression. Okay, there's no energy loss due to kinetic friction. Okay, now I have this term. Work done by non-conservative forces, okay? So I do have a conservative force. It's the tension, okay? So here's the ball. Okay, at any point, the tension is always perpendicular to the direction it's moving. So that's the direction it's moving. I'm using S for an arc length, so that's the direction it's headed that instant. So yes, there is a non-conservative force, but no, it does not do work. So that's zero. So E initial is equal to E final from A to B. So I have my reference point there, as shown. So I, I wrote down initial energies and final energies. Look at my picture, okay? So initial energy is kinetic, initial energy is potential, MGH. Final energy is kinetic, initial, or final potential is zero, because that's my reference point. And then just solve this for V final, right? Get rid of all the Ms, okay? That's no big deal, okay? Part B, it says, okay, um, what's the least value of V zero when it's thrown? so that it goes up to horizontal position. Okay, so I have the same picture here. So B says, okay, I wanna know what's the minimum speed I can throw this so that it keeps going and it goes just up to the horizontal at point P, okay? So essentially they're asking, what's the minimum speed at point A so that the, the final velocity at point P is zero, okay? So I'm conserving energy from point A to point P, right? Remember, tension does not do work, so energy is conserved. Okay, same reference point. Wrote down my energies, okay? Initials at A, potential and kinetic. Okay, I'm trying to find V0. And the final energy, K final zero, because it's at rest up here. And final potential is Mg times the height. Well, the height is the radius, okay, up here. Okay, that height is L, right? That's the length of the cord, that's the radius. Okay, and then I can solve this for V0. 
all right? And then you just have to, here I have an H, remember H way up on the first part. Right, that was my H, okay? So I put in H and I can solve for V0. <clears throat> so that tells me that as long as it's thrown at that minimum speed, it'll go up to the horizontal at P, okay? Now for part C, okay, it says, what's, what's minimum speed do I need to throw it at A? so that it goes, swings, it swings down through B, and then up to a vertical position with the cord remaining straight, okay? So that means you have to throw this at some speed so that it keeps going past that point P, and it goes up to Q, okay? But obviously if I throw it really fast at A, it'll definitely keep on going in a circle. Okay. But they want to know what's the slowest I can throw it so that when it reaches point Q, the cord remains straight. Anything slower than that, then the ball is going to go like this and not go up to the top. So for the cord to remain straight up at the top, that means the rope is just about to go slack at the top. That means the tension is zero. Okay. And I said, try this with your shoe. There's your hand. Take your shoe. Okay, twirl it around. Okay, obviously you can twirl it around in a tight circle, but twirl it around such that it comes just up to the top where this tension goes slack. That tension goes to zero. You can actually see the, the shoelace okay, start to just go slack, and that's the condition they want up there. So I'm conserving energy from point A to point Q. Same reference point, okay, potential zero there. So the initial and final energy. Initial energy at A is kinetic. Okay, I'm trying to find that V0 speed. Um, initial, initial potential. Final kinetic at Q. Okay, final potential. Remember your height, okay, is the diameter. Okay, length of the string is the radius, L. So the diameter is 2L. Okay, so I'm trying to find V0. All right. Um, so I solve for V0 here. Okay, but... I don't know the speed up at point Q, okay? I don't know the speed up at the top. So now that's a Newton second law problem. So I said, okay, I have to do the five-step method for the ball up at the top. So I drew the forces at the top. I only have mg that points down. Okay, remember, tension zero, okay? So picture forces, coordinate systems based on the direction of the acceleration, nothing to break up. So I'm doing net force equal ma, so the only force I have is mg, points down, that's equal to mv squared over the radius r, which is l, okay? Mass drops out, I get the, get the speed squared at q, put that right back there, just a big mess, got to be careful of your h's, remember that's what h is, it's a parameter I made up, h, based on the l and theta given, and then that would be the minimum speed. 